Hey everyone, it's Crystal here with Sober Onions. I'm super excited to have special guest Megan here. Say hi, Megan. Hi, everybody. And uh, Megan's joining us today. We're going to talk about her sobriety journal journey. Excuse me. We're going to talk about how she got sober, why she stayed sober, a little bit about her story. But let's start with where you're from. Uh, we're doing a Zoom call right now, and I want to just know a little bit more about you. We met online. You are the sober sisters or sisters, right? <laughs> That's how you say it. And uh, we'll talk about about that and and just how you got started with your uh, platform on Instagram and why you're doing that as well. So go ahead and take it away with where you're from and a little bit about you. All right. So, yep, my name is Megan. Um, I'm in Boston, Massachusetts, well, right outside of Boston. Um, I've lived here actually 18 years, but I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. So I'm oh. a trans. All my family lives back in Buffalo. So I've lived away from them for a long time, but we're still very close, but, um, yep. So I'm here in Boston. All Hence right. The, uh, sister, sisters. It's a okay. Boston take on that. <laughs> it's a Boston accent, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm from, I'm from California, but I lived in Florida for 22 years. So I'm just now coming back to California because my family's here. So everyone thinks that I have a little bit of Florida slang, uh, because I lived there for so long. I don't hear it, but apparently I do. So it's kind of funny. I do notice your accent. And of course we're both mothers. We connected on that and you're full-time mom in it, right? now I have an empty nest but let's talk about your sobriety when did you first get sober and was it a rock bottom or was it just a personal choice okay so um I guess for years I um kind of played the moderation game you know um it would be like I'd make all these stipulations like okay I'm not going to drink during the week or I'm not going to drink alone or I'm going to only have two glasses of wine tonight. You know, none of that worked. And um, finally, um, I guess you could say my journey on sobriety really started um, December 26th of 2020. So just at the end of last year. The day after uh, Christmas. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You're like, Merry Christmas to me tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, like I remember that day so clear. Um, it was my, I didn't have my kids that day there with their dad. It was right after Christmas, the holidays, you know, always make me a little more emotional and um, anxiety ridden. Therefore I would ramp up my drinking around that time. And so that night I was alone. I drank a bottle of wine by myself, I passed out and I woke up out of nowhere at three in the morning and um, just mad at myself yet. Like, you know, I did this again. Like, I can't believe it. You know, I, that I, I was here again after all these times that I had tried to moderate. And um, so I was like crying. I was just really upset and just talking to the universe, just like, just give me a sign, something like. Um, and so I, I had um, joined the Luckiest Club and they have um, sobriety meetings. And I, so I had joined it, but I never went to a meeting. And that night I, I was searching through my email to find, um, a meeting to go to the next day on the online meeting. And all of a sudden I stumbled across an email that was from Laura McCowan from the book, We Are the Luckiest, saying that I had won a scholarship that I had applied to um, for her sobriety course. And that was my like aha moment. Like it was totally a sign, it was meant to be. So then I start crying again and now I'm just like happy tears because I'm, I, and that really was like such a turning point for me um, on this, you know, my whole journey, I guess. Um, I ended up doing that course and it was amazing. I learned so much. So it was a little rocky. So I, I did go like 30 days without drinking. And then I dabbled again a little bit with drinking. And then I went a hundred days, kind of dabbled again. And then just every time I'm getting stronger and stronger. And now I've really been going strong. Like I I don't believe I'll go back to drinking. I won't. <laughs> I'll say, <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of, um, I guess, the journey on that. Um, Do you find that? Um, I felt like the holidays tend to be really hard for me as well. 
I know that a lot of people relate to that, that the holidays, especially for me, because I was divorced and my kids were split between me and their dad. And, you know, it was always a fight. It was, you know, whose fan, it wasn't even between us. It was like, whose parents are gonna have this event or this dinner. And they were just pulled back and forth. And I just, I saw myself just like, totally powerless when it came to my kids in the holidays. And so I just would drink until I, like you said, I'd pass out and then it didn't solve anything. You know, I, I woke up the next day and my kids were still not there. And so it, it I don't, I wish I had, you know, a program or some sort of coping mechanism to help me get through those hard times. And I know there's people out there that are looking for something. So you found that program just going online. Can you talk a little bit more about that program? We'll put it in the show notes too. So if anybody's looking to, um, you know, looking for some resources, we'll put it in there, but tell me a little bit more about the program. Okay. So, um, I don't know if you've read that book. Um, we are I the have not please put it on your list. Um, I actually listened to it on Audible. Uh, I wasn't really like a big reader. So the Audible books just were easier for me. I'd throw my headphones, I'd be cleaning, you know, around the house. And that book just, um, just really like hit home with me. Um, so I started to follow, follow her on Instagram, Laura McCowan, the author. And, um, then I noticed they had a group, um, because it was during COVID. So, you know, there wasn't really, um, need it meetings and as many meetings or meetings at all I think for um for people to go to so she started basically a support group and they would have multiple meetings all through the day um there's like a free trial I, I you know you do have to pay I think it's like 12.99 a month I forget exactly but honestly it's just it's worth it um and I did go to like I ended up going to a few of the meetings but there was so many people in these meetings like it, they were all in zoom one meeting had 750 people mostly women wow yeah and that's when I was like I'm not the only one that's suffering or struggling to like stop drinking like it, it was women like all ages from young to old um and so that was like really helpful I'd say in the beginning so then she had posted on her Instagram that she was offering a course called sobriety and color. And, um, so I went and looked it up and it was $750, mm -hmm. which, you know, as a single mom, that's, I don't have that type of money, um, to just put into something like that. So there was an option to apply for a scholarship. So I filled it out. Um, and I said, you know, I'm a single mom, I work in healthcare, I work in a, um, emergency room and here in Boston. And I just, and you had to say like why you felt you needed it, you know? And I said, I just really want to like be successful and not drink anymore. And I feel like this would help me and da, 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 da. So I ended up getting that email. It was probably a month after I applied. I almost forgot about it in saying <laughs> that I won the scholarship. So I got the course paid for the $750 course I got for free. And honestly, looking back, it was worth it was so amazing. much more. Like well, don't you think, think about, I think about how much money I have saved not drinking. I like was doing the math and I don't, I think I did that in one of my episodes, but I was like, oh my gosh, like, cause you justify it. You're like, oh, a bottle of wine's only $9, no big deal. But if you're drinking a bottle of wine every night, it adds up, you know, and it does nothing. There's nothing to show for it. You can drink and drink and drink, nothing to show for it, as opposed to spending money on resources. You're a better person. You are growing as a human being. You're you're becoming um, someone in in our society that's helping other people. You know, that's my that's my goal. That's my prayer. Is how can I help other people? And you, this is something that's new to me for sure, because I'm you know newly sober. I'm only well, I think I'll be five months soon, but it seems like the longest five months of my life, <laughs> which is wild because time has just flown by in my life, but it's just new. And it's amazing how much you can help people because I found your Instagram when I first started being sober, like, especially I came out of rehab and I didn't have any, uh, 
social media. I didn't have access to phones. I had nothing when I was in rehab and when I was going through detox. So the first thing I did was basically type in sober, you know, and that's what people don't realize is like you, you just like Googled it, you know, like, how do I do this? And so that's kind of why I started the podcast was so that people that are either sober curious or they're relapsing, or they're just looking for those resources, like what are those resources? And I think what you're doing, especially with your Instagram platform is so encouraging. And I know it is to me because it's nice to have someone out there where you don't feel alone. Like I had um, sent you a text the other day when you had posted something and you were talking and I was listening to it and I was like, wow, I, I relate to that so much. And it's huge that you're doing that. So you should be proud of yourself for sure. Do you feel like um, the people that are around you, do you feel like they are supportive or do you, because you, you seem to have, you know, your head on your shoulders, you're successful. Do you find that people say, oh, well, this is just a phase or yay for you. You're doing it. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> How do you feel people are responding to your, um, like your Instagram and that being your day to day? Um, so in general, the people that are really close to me are very supportive. My family, my mom, my brother, you know, my sister, um, my boyfriend is very supportive. He's, he loves like that. I don't drink and our relationship has improved like tenfold since I took that out of the equation because now my moods are just stable. Like I would just have a bad day, have anxiety. And then I, I would just, you know, be like, okay, I'm, I'm breaking up with you. Like I just, I didn't have the capacity to like work through issues or, and I just couldn't like handle it. And now it's, it's just like night and day. Um, so that's been great. Um, I have a lot of, uh, a lot of supportive friends. Um, and then there's the people that are kind of on the outside of that, I'd say are just, they're ex happy for me because they can tell I'm happier, but they're also, some people are intrigued. And in, I think that they want to like, no more and because they're struggling too um i'm guessing but um yeah so i definitely have a lot of supportive people and um yeah i love that um doing the instagram thing honestly like that keeps me going and um it's been hard to kind of like be vulnerable and put myself out there because there is sort of you know the stigma and um so i'm slowly getting better and better and i know that i had people that inspired me that I had never met before through, you know, social media or through the books. Um, so I'm trying, I want to be that person for somebody else. Um, because I feel like, you know, that's helpful for people to know that they're not alone. And um, yeah. I read what you posted today. You, you posted in one of your journals that you were proud of yourself because you were reading your son a book before bedtime and instead of a glass of wine you had a water bottle and I know that that's something that I've had to work through with even you know my sponsor and through therapy is just the fact that my kids never saw me without something in my hand whether it was a wine glass whether it was I mean I look back at photos and there's like not one photo with me without a drink in my hand and um I, I read that and I thought, wow, that's, I relate to that. I relate to the fact that you were so changed that, okay, I'm reading a book with my son with a water bottle in my hand instead of a wine glass. And that's huge. And there's so many people that can relate to that. And I felt that you put that out there, which it exposed you obviously, which I thought was very vulnerable. But at the same time, I literally was reading it saying, wow, I've done that before, you know, and how awesome that she's moved on from that. So even those little things that you're doing like that are, are tremendous. And I know there's other mothers out there that have the chance right now to change because I unfortunately don't have that. I, my kids, kids always saw me intoxicated. My kids always saw me with a drink. And I, I've met people who, you know, they said my kids have never seen me with a drink and I envy that. And there's people out there that right now is such a great time to change your life for your kids. And um, have you felt that because of your sobriety, 
things have changed for you as a mother? How did your drinking affect your parenting before? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, great question. So I would say it's changed dramatically. Um, I won't forget that the first, one of the first nights that I went crawled into bed, my kids still sleep with me most of the time, but, uh, I had crawled into bed next to my, um, my youngest son who's seven now. Um, and I just was like, I, you know, obviously I was sober. I went to bed sober and I realized like, this is the first time I've crawled into bed next to him. And I just was like staring at him like, oh my God, like what have I been doing this whole time? You know, I, he's so just precious in, in the other nights, you know, I just be like crawling in and just passing out. And um, so that is huge for me. And then just like patience, I have so much more patience. I'm, um, you know, because I was always just like on low energy from not getting great sleep and, uh, or I'd be like in bed like half the time because I do work overnight. So my sleep's kind of, you know, all over the place. But if I had drank that night before, I would take them to school, probably come home, go get back into bed, go pick them up, go back into the bed. And sometimes my son would say like, mom, you just sleep all the time, you know, and he'd say things like that. And like, I, he doesn't say that anymore. You know, he'll say, mom, come, um, come sit with me and watch TV. And, and I will, you know, and it's just little things like that, that I just feel like I am more present. I appreciate the little things, um, more patience with them. And, um, yeah, I've definitely noticed a huge difference there. It blows my mind how much clarity there is with sobriety. You know, it, it, <laughs> it sounds silly, but I feel like so much wasted time. Like I, I look back and I'm just like, what was I doing? You know, I, I'm enjoy I went to a Dodger game for the first time uh, last week. And it's the first time I've ever been to a Dodger game without drinking. And uh, jokingly, my dad said, oh, so you actually got to watch the game? <laughs> I said, yeah, actually I did. <laughs> because normally going to the game just meant drinking. You know, so I, I mean, and it's expensive. So, I mean, beers of $20, you know, oh. $20 for one beer now, I couldn't believe it. And it's, it's crazy because you're sitting there and you're looking around and everyone is just a fool. And there's so many kids around. There's just kids everywhere. And people are just, you know, they're walking around these giant beers and there's kids everywhere and they're getting in their cars and they're driving. I mean, we were leaving and I was like, 90% of these people have drank and they're driving. Like how oh, I was, yeah. I was blown away. I was like, there was, you know, how many people at this, that at this stadium and every single person was getting in a car and getting on the freeway. Isn't and, it funny? I like shifts that way. Like now you're seeing something like on yeah. the outside and it's like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Or before I was like, well, let me just have two beers and, and that's it. Cause I got to drive home. You know, like my, my, my brain is just totally opened up, which I, which I appreciate. I, I've also met so many incredible people that have inspired me like you. Um, I would have never like dove into social media the way that I have. I, I used to have a dance studio and so I would use social media just for free business marketing and that was all I used it for. And now I use it as part of my meditation, as part of my therapy. I really read a lot of what people say, like, like when you posted today, you know, your journals, I read them and I was inspired and it made me think about my own life. So I hope you continue to do what you've been doing. And is there any advice that you can give to anyone that maybe is in your situation? You know, you're a single mom, you're a hardworking woman, you're in Boston. <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of Boston ladies out there. Um, what is your suggestion on the times that are hard? And I read one of your journals as well, where you had relapsed and you had said, well, I did it again. You know, I had wine last night and I feel like crap and I have a headache and, and just the remorse, like reading it, I could feel it. And I know that there's, you know, moms out there that 
it's easy to use your kids as an excuse. Like you said, the anxiety, the stress, and it's like, well, I'm just going to drink because that's going to help the situation, but I don't necessarily think that it does. So what do you feel is your um, suggestions, knowing what you've gone through to the single moms out there that are trying to be sober, get sober, or maintain sobriety? Okay. Um, the first thing I would say is you don't need, need the wine. You don't need the drinks. You don't need them. You are much better without them. I know sometimes like we're stuck in that spot where we feel like we need it to like, just get through the night to get through the day, but we don't need it. And once we can get past that, you know, it, things just are so different. And, um, and also for me, I think what really changed this last time, um, back at the end of 2020 and why I've been successful, you know, this time compared to all the years past is that I made a decision. I made a choice and like a commit. It's not so much. Um, it's more of a commitment to myself that I made to myself and my kids that like, you know, I'm not going to do this crap anymore. I, I deserve better. And it took me a while to, to realize that because I didn't feel like I deserved it. You know, I did carry a lot of guilt for my divorce and that, you know, my kids were going to be messed up because their parents were divorced and it was my fault and all this stuff. And um, so just, just making that conscious choice decision that you're going to just try to be better and you're going to do everything you can to be your healthiest and to just not look back. And if you do stumble that you just get right, right back up. Like in the past when I would, you know, when you're on a diet and you, you, um, you eat McDonald's or eat something bad, you go off your diet and then you're like, well, I just might as well throw my whole diet out the window because I just, you know, cheated. If you mess up, you just keep going, you forgive yourself and you keep, keep going. And eventually you will string together enough days and you really won't want to even want it anymore. Um, yeah, like eventually I got to a point where it just wasn't, I, I don't like it when I, when I drink now. Um, so I would say, yeah, to make that decision, um, not look back. And I'm trying to think what else, um, say, um, get educated. Like that was really important to, for me and helpful. It was reading all these like quitlet books and reading all these books of other women's stories. And you see, you're not alone and you learn from their struggles and you take, I kind of took pieces of everything and put it together and, and did what worked for me because what works for me might not work for you or somebody else. So you have to kind of tailor it to what works for you. Um, you know, definitely what keeps me sober is my Instagram, my, my people, you know, I've met so many great people and it's always like a little voice in the back of my head. Like, I don't want to let them down because I really want to just be like as honest as I can all the time. And um, yeah, I don't want to let, you know, everybody else down because everybody else is trying so hard and doing great. And um, it's me really motivated. So I'd say like follow accounts on social media, get rid of accounts that are negative or that make you feel bad and just follow like the authors, follow just anybody that's good. And that's going to keep inspiring you. Uh, honestly, that was very helpful for me. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm really excited to learn more about you. And if you guys want to follow Megan, she's on Instagram as Sober Sisters. And I will put that all in the show notes. And if you have any questions, I'm sure you can direct message her and follow her and she will help you stay accountable. And with that, we're going to go ahead and end. But I just want to say thank you so much, Megan. You're awesome. I really appreciate you coming on the show and um other than that this is crystal with sober onions and we will see you soon and don't forget if i can do it we can do it <laughs>